Hello class. In chapter 3, we are going to talk about analysis of cost, volume, and pricing to increase profitability. So let's get started. Now the first thing we need to uh, understand and compute is something called break-even point. This is the point at which your sales volume, either in units or dollars, um, makes the numbers work out where you have zero profit or loss. You're at the break-even point. So all of your revenue will cover all of your variable cost and all of your fixed cost. And you don't have any profit, nor do you have any loss. So that's the break-even point. Now here's uh, one way to compute it using the equation method. So we know that sales minus variable cost and also take away fixed cost will equal profit. So here's the equation. And if we set the equation up with the information they give us up here, and what they have is... We have a product that sells at $36 per bottle per unit. The cost will be $24 per bottle. That's the variable cost. And the fixed cost will be $60,000. So what's the break-even point? Well, at the break-even point, as I said earlier, profit is zero. So let's say all this is going to be equal to zero. Now on the left side, we have sales. It'll be $36 per unit, you know, per bottle per unit minus the variable cost at $24 per unit, minus the fixed cost. So what we'll do is add 60000 to both sides. This is, again, you know, simple algebra. So that takes it away from this side, drops it over to this other side right here, and take 24 from 36. They both have N. So we're down to $12 N. And $12 is the contribution margin you know, per unit. So $12 N, number of units, equals 60000 and now divide both sides by 12 and get 5,000 units. So what we've done is computed the break-even point. So at the 5,000 unit sales level, we will have zero profit. That's the break-even point. Of course, we'd like to have you know, profit on the positive side, but this computes the break-even point so you know where you, where you stand. And um, like I said a minute ago, the contribution margin per unit is 12. So contribution margin is... $36 sales price per unit minus variable cost per unit gives us $12 contribution margin per unit. Now, another way to find the break-even point is, you know, take the same situation. This would do a little bit quicker. Break-even point in units is equal to your total fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. So $60,000 divided by 12 gives us the same 5,000 units. So either this format or this format works. Either one, you get the same answer. And this is plugging the numbers back in to an income statement and making sure we're at the break-even point with a net income of zero. And so at 5,000 units times $36 per unit, $180,000 total revenue. Total variable cost, 5,000 times 24, $120,000. You subtract, you get 60. That's the contribution margin. Take away 60000 for fixed cost, and we're at zero. Now, the contribution margin ratio method is another way to find the break-even point. And what we're going to use is something called contribution margin ratio. So this is a ratio now. And the contribution margin ratio is equal to contribution margin divided by sales. So the first step here is to use total dollars, okay, total dollar values. Now these numbers are coming from right here. Here's sales revenue, contribution margin, here's the fixed cost. So the ratio is $60,000 in contribution margin divided by revenue. So it's a third, or as you can see here, 0.333, and it keeps going. Now doing the same thing with unit values, you get the same answer. The contribution margin ratio is the contribution margin per unit divided by sales price per unit. So $12 divided by 36 gives us 0.333 and so forth. Again, the 12 and the 36 come back here from our original numbers. Sales price 36 per unit, contribution margin is 12 per unit. Okay. So now once we have the contribution margin ratio, we plug it into this formula. If you notice, it's a little bit different than the one right um, here. Sorry for all the scrolling back and forth, but this is break-even point in units. 
and this is the contribution margin per unit. This one we're working with now is breaking the point in dollars. We'll divide the fixed cost by the contribution margin ratio. So 60,000 divided by the point 333 gives us $180,000 in sales revenue. And then if you want to find it in units, divide your sales revenue by your selling price per unit, and there's the $5,000 again. So several ways to find the break-even point. You, know, you can find it in units, in dollars, use the contribution margin ratio, find it in dollars, and so forth. But you know, any of these methods gives you the same, the same thing. Now here, let's take it a step further. Of course, we don't want to just break even. We'd like to have a profit, you know, so we can you know, stay in business and make the shareholders happy. So let's say we want to make $40,000 profit. Going back to the original formula, sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost equals profit. Now, instead of zero here, when we were trying to find the break even point, let's put in the profit of $40,000. Work through the algebra again. And you'll find out that the break-even point is now eight thousand. Excuse me, not the break-even point, but the targeted sales amount is now eight thousand three hundred thirty-three units. We're past the break-even point. The break-even point is still five thousand units. We are past that. We want to make a profit of forty thousand dollars. So to do that, now we see we have to sell eight thousand three hundred thirty-three units. Sales volume units using this formula. Put the desired profit up in the numerator with fixed cost. And so 60,000 fixed cost plus the 40 desired profit divided by the contribution margin per unit get the same answer. This is our targeted sales if we want to make $40,000. You can take this information, plug it in here, sell you know these units, and, and you know usually you can round this up or down one unit. It's not going to make a big difference. But um, this shows you that we'll have a profit, a net income of $40,000. You can go through here with another example. So let's go to the next page. Now let's change some things around. Um, this company wants to have probably a cost plus pricing. And they say that, you know, $36 per unit. Uh, you know, that, that's what we decided to sell the price was. And this is how they got it earlier. It's the variable cost plus half the variable cost. So a 50% markup of variable cost will be the pricing. Okay, so that's where they got the 36 earlier. Now, they do some, some marketing research and decide that they cannot support a $36 price for an extended period. So what they're thinking about doing is uh, dropping the sales down to a price of $28 per bottle. If we do that, our contribution margin is only $4. So we dropped sales quite a bit, did not change variable cost per unit, did not change fixed cost. And so plug the number in here. We only have a $4 contribution margin per unit. We want a targeted profit of 40. We have to sell 25,000 units, 25,000. Remember a minute ago when we had the... Um, price at 36 per unit, you know, the sales price, we only had to sell 8,333 or 334. But now, dropping the sales quite a bit, we have to sell 25,000 units to get back to that target profit of $40,000. And this is the same thing, you know, contribution margin uh, per unit, which is now four, divided into fixed cost and desired profit, still 60 and 40. There's the 25,000 again. Plugging this number into the income statement, here's the new revenue amount, new variable cost, new contribution margin, same fixed cost, and there's the 40. So we have to sell a lot more units here to break even if we only reduce the selling price. Now there are various uh, options they're thinking about doing, changing the amount in each pill. They're selling pills here in the bottles and so forth. And let's see what they decide to do. Come down here. So if they change the variable cost from 24 to 12 per bottle and have the uh, $28 you know, sales price, then the contribution margin 
will now jump to $16 if we go 28 sales price minus 12 variable cost. So if they're going to sell it at $28 but drop the variable cost from 24 to 12, our contribution margin is now $16. Let's take that and plug it in the formula. So $16 and we're going to divide that by our fixed cost plus the targeted income. We're down to 6,250 in units to get the targeted amount of 40. So that's a lot better than having to sell 25,000 units. You know, maybe we can hit this mark right here, 6,250 units to uh, earn a profit of $40,000. But we did two things. We lowered the price to 28 and we lowered the variable cost down to 12. Plug the numbers in. Our targeted sales level is now 6,250. You can use this formula and get the same answer. Uh, let's see. Now here's what we can do. Let's change the fixed cost. So if we change the fixed cost, so we have the $28 sales price, $12 variable cost, so our contribution margin per unit is now 16. Our fixed cost are only 30. The profit's 40 we're after. Now we're dividing 16 into 70. We drop that targeted sales level down to 4,375. You know, uh, we kept these the same as the previous example, but dropped the, the fixed cost quite a bit in half. So we dropped the uh, targeted amount down to 4,375. Get the same answer using this equation. And you can prove it in the income statement. Okay, so that shows you how you can analyze different decisions. You know, can we drop the sales price? Do we have to drop the variable cost? Uh, can we drop the fixed cost? You know, what are the results if we do that? Now, this this graph, uh, this is nothing I'm going to have you draw on, on an exam, but I know I'll have you look at a graph on the exam and interpret the various areas in this graph, the various lines and the areas. So let's take a close look at this. Now, you know, this is a different example here. So we have a break-even point of 1875 in units, 52.50 or 52.5 in sales. So here are the units. There's the total, uh, I should say total revenue. Yeah, total revenue, sales. This is your, your total revenue line. If you don't sell any units, it's zero. And then it goes up right there. This green line is your total cost line. And so your total cost line at the zero unit level is your fixed cost. So if you have total cost, uh, excuse me, total, yeah, total cost, fixed cost of 30, zero sales, your loss is $30,000. And this is your area of loss in here. This here is your area of loss. If you, so if you don't sell anything, you still have to pay for your fixed cost, which are 30. Okay. And so this here, you're going to lose money until you hit the break even point. This is your total cost line right here. It starts at 30000 and then goes up for the variable cost that you're adding on to the fixed cost. Of course, this is your fixed cost line. It does not change with level of activity. So total cost line, which is above the total revenue line until the break-even point. All this area back here is loss area. If you don't sell any units, your loss is 30000 Then as you start to sell more units, your loss is smaller and smaller and smaller until you hit the break-even point, zero loss, zero profit. But now past the break-even point, you start having a profit. So each unit you sell past the break-even point, your profit will get larger and larger. So I want you to know in this that here's your break-even point. This is your total revenue line, total cost line, total fixed cost line and this is your loss area and it decreases up until you hit the break-even point once you sell 1875 and then once you get past the break-even point you start having a profit so at 3,000 units your profit is the difference between your total sales line and your total cost line so know this graph know what the lines are and know what the areas are All right.
right, so let's go to the next page. Margin safety. Uh, real quickly, margin safety is just the level where you are currently sitting or maybe what you have budgeted compared to your break-even point. And this can be asked either in units or in dollars. So if your budgeted sales in units is 43.75 and your break-even sales is 18.75 in units, your margin of safety is 2,500 units. This means if your sales level dropped 2,500 units, you'd be right at the break-even point. So if you're expecting to sell 4,375, but you come up 2,500 units short on your sales, you're still going to break even. You're not going to make any profit, but at least you will not make a loss. And that really, that's all the margin of safety is. You can do the same thing in dollars. There's your revenue. Uh, that's your budget area. There's your break-even revenue. And so you're $70,000 in revenue above your break-even revenue point. And I'll let you, you know, read the rest of it yourself down through here, a little example you can go through. So let's see what's next. Now, this is a, a um, spreadsheet. I'm not going to have you do this, but it allows you to change different scenarios, change fixed costs, change variable costs. You could change the selling price or whatever. And it shows you all the different results. You can do this by hand if you want to. And what you do is just take the new numbers and plug it into this, uh, this, this formula. That's all you do. So if you reduce the sales price per bottle to 25, and you think you're going to sell 5,000 units, then it's 25 per unit, 5,000 units, that you're, that's your sales. If your variable cost is still at 12, 12 times 5, that's your total variable cost. Take away your um, uh, fixed cost, and your profit is 35,000. Okay. And the next couple of examples, same thing. You know, just different numbers. Looks like you're increasing the sales price, you're increasing fixed cost, and you can see what your profit is. So you can change things around. Again, just like we did a couple of pages ago, if you're thinking about ch you know, changing the sales price, thinking about uh, changing your variable cost per unit, your fixed cost, what's going to be the result? So taking those new numbers, plugging them into the equation, shows you your new profit levels. This one's not so good. This one's better. Okay, This one uh, dropped off a little bit. That's all that's showing you. Don't worry about multi-product cost volume analysis. We're not going to cover that. And cost volume profit limitations. Uh, the only ones we have to worry about, well, these are just some assumptions you make. The selling price is constant. Okay, that's good. Costs are linear. Okay. Sales mix and multi-product companies is constant. Okay, let's take that, even though we skipped that area. Inventory levels remain constant, and all cost, volume, profit variables are within that relevant range. And let's see. Yes, that's it. So there's a study review problem. You should review this. And again, as usual, go back and read the chapter word for word yourself. Read it carefully, read it slowly, and follow all the numbers through and all the examples they give you. Okay, well, good luck with your studies.